Good morning and welcome to our online worship here at the Anglican Church of St. Bart's. We are so glad that you can join us virtually. My name is the Reverend Dan Klein and I'm the Reverend Jesse Thompson. And we are the co-rectors um, of the Church of St. Paul in the Desert in Palm Springs, California. We're part of the Episcopal Church. We've just come from the General Convention and saw the newly elected presiding bishop, so we are pumped up and excited to be here today, carrying the joy of that momentous occasion with you. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us say together the collect for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You're invited to sit if you're not sitting already for our readings. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. You excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you. So we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, Yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so, you're, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be your need, in order that may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him. He was by the lake. And then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, but she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of this disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowds pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? And he looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, 
your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And when they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. And then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. And he took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha come, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> 